the trouble if nothing else. Sounds like fun. All right. Very yeah, good. Yeah, looking forward. Well, guys, you have a great week. It's always a pleasure. All Yours, right, of course. Uh, when I go yeah. in. So... Enjoy, stay out of trouble, and I'll talk to you guys soon. It's a All character right. building experience. See Take you care, later. Bronk. All right. <laughs> Take care. All right. Bye. All right, that was And Bronx. he is a character, isn't he? Yes, he is. <laughs> With that in mind, let's take our first break. Let's, you know, I feel like there's a wait. I see, see that crest coming? That, that's, that's a big one. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Catch and, that. And me without my rubber suit. Uh, you don't need it. Uh, Motor Mouth Radio, Ray Guarino, Joe D. Come back. Uh, put the sunglasses on because uh, you may be Dan Owabi, Steve McGarrett. We'll come back in a minute. See ya. Where's, where's that? Where's that? Take off the realities of the day, broaden your musical horizons, and embrace the diversity every Monday afternoon at 5 on Revelations on 90.3 WHPC. The show offers a potently unique collection of music with an emphasis on themes and rock rarities, an occasional tour de force of blues and soul mixed with compelling sets of folk and folk rock. I'm Steve Kay, and I've got the perfect soundtrack for your drive home every Monday afternoon at 5 on on Revelations right here on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hi, I'm Rob Leonard, host of Beatles Songs for the past 24 years right here on WHPC. Beatles Songs airs every Friday from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m., playing the music of the Beatles together, apart, along with Beatles cover songs and songs the Beatles covered, along with songs the Beatles either guested on and or produced. And of course, we provide Beatles news. It's not the same show where they play the same 10 songs. So join me every Friday for Beatles songs. 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. on 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College, streaming at ncc.edu slash WHPC. Boy, how often does your promo song end and cue you to come back on Perfect. the mic on Motor Mouth Radio? Ray Guarino, Joe D, we're trying to Let's write go fire wrongs. up the Marauder. Come on, let's go, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's got to be an old, uh, an old Mercury. No, was, was it, in, it, was a, it was a Mercury. No, it was a, actually a Grand Marquis. I think so, yes. But I just always call them Marauders because Marauder sounds cool to say. Good and enough. In, in later years, those ended up being Marauders. That, uh, That's correct. Yeah. Nice cars. Nice oh, yeah, cars. Absolutely. Can't wait. Fix one of them once, but the bus. Never mind. Uh, so, anyway, I was thinking about. Uh, we, we were talking a little bit about uh, that little project you were playing with uh, during the week on the. Uh, over in the, uh, the other location the of the Motor Mouth uh, thing over there. Yeah, that was uh, the ongoing thing. And it raises a lot of secondary questions to me. Like when you work on a customer's car and you're charged to do a job, but you find other things wrong, like what do you do? How far do you go? And. and What's the, you know, because I kept saying we were working on the steering of this car because it was all over the place. And, and we kept drilling down. Once I did the steering box, that took out the majority of the problems. Thank you, Tori, for supplying that steering box. Oh, which yeah. you still have to Seriously. Come pay you for. Um, then we found out, we found, you know, suspension parts put in wrong. We found, uh, I found control arm control arms that were not torqued in the in the loaded condition they were in the free right. position and now as, as I, I fixed all this the car got markedly better but i kept saying hey how do you know the owner didn't think when he stomped on that car the front end rose and the wheel went all over the place maybe he thought oh my god my car's an animal i love this yeah really that's you like know, the same people who leave holes in their exhaust systems i'm just or flip the air cleaner lid on a car I, ready I kept, clock. yeah <laughs> i kept telling uh, mikey jr that you know i told him i said uh, you drove this car. Now you got to drive my car. I okay. Because when I get into my car, everything just stays the way it should. It's it's that's and that's your what car I only looks fifty two years old. Your car, you know, is much more modern. You know, well, the, the, there's a lot of there's a lot of cool modern tech in that. Yeah, the, well, well the upgrades is, the original tech, I should say. The suspension is more modern than in the Camaro, but still, the Camaro is a great driving car. It's got a great motor, great powertrain. Yeah, I like it. I'm really digging it. It's got, whoever built the motor did it right. The whole build quality is nice. Yeah, yeah, just minor things. Sometimes you, you know, there's a lot to remember about fixing the car, uh, even back then. Yeah, uh, as far as doing things, quote unquote, the right way, the specifications. There's a reason why they have you, to you know, torquing the control arms. 
Right. You know, with with the vehicle loaded as opposed to just like getting under there and doing three chin ups with your craftsman wrench. Uh-huh. You know, so that that kind of stuff has uh it it has credence because yeah, okay, the guy put the he put the uh the suspension together and Obviously, it didn't go sideways into the wall the first time he hit the gas. Right. But was it right? You know what I mean? Um, as a matter of fact, I know you and I had swapped some emails about this, and I was like, Yes. I do remember a lot of them first generation Camaros being kind of squirrely when you, you jumped on them. You said that, yeah. You know what I mean? But then again, I never, <laughs> I never drove that particular car. Well, that's the thing. And like I said, just to reiterate, maybe, I don't know who the guy is that owns the car. I never met him. I don't know what his history is with cars. This may be the first really kind of fast car he's ever had and maybe he thinks that's the way a car is supposed to act yeah seriously you know guys like us we've been around the block a few times and and under the cars a few times we know no it's not supposed to do that it's supposed to stay straight and not you know exhibit like uh characteristics of of a uh you know, of a TIE fighter with a bad aileron. Right. You know? <laughs> I was going to say one of them bumper cars over in the amusement park there where you... TIE fighters go faster. That's true, too, but... Yeah, and that noise is kind of cool, too, but... And when you dip down in the canyon, you, <laughs> you don't have a lot of room between the... the sometimes on right, your Right, so tips. you're steering better to be right, you know? You know and you, you can't always, like, throw it up on its side and do one of them, I mean, you know? That you have to have your R2 unit locked down the stabilizer. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Okay, you're, gonna, you're just going to keep making me geek, aren't you? You just like enjoying making me geek. <laughs> yes, I you do. You start making me quote stuff, you know? You know what? Because it takes you out of your normal existence, and I think, uh, and it brings you back to a normal existence that's the real you. And to me, that's what we're all about. You know, it's like what's under the skin. Like you said, what's under the skin of a 52 year old car isn't always what it looks like on the outside. People are the same way. But I got to say, after I got the suspension stuff squared away, Steve from the other shop came down yesterday. And he's an old school guy. Right. I like working with Steve. Mm-hmm. He was going to do a string level to set the toe. Oh, he knows Bronx guy. Yes. Cool. Well, again, just to get it into spec, and then and Mike had bought a um, a bubble a bubble adapter for the wheel to get uh, camber adjustments. Oh, I thought he was just a little dirty, wanting to get clean and throw it. No, no, we, no, no, no. We did we did agree that the shop floor at the second shop isn't really flat enough to play with the camber. So right. He strung it, and we drove it, and, and everything was fine. Uh, we're going to take the car back to the other shop where they have an, a, a frame rack, a frame machine. Right. Put it on that, which is leveled, and then he'll... Yeah, he'll don't, get much, think, don't make, get much leveler and flatter than that. But if Steve is listening, I, we were talking yesterday about his 34 Plymouth that he was working on a project. I'd like that. I want to have him on the show, have him come in the studio. But, oh, hell yeah. But he can call, too, 516-572-7440. Yeah. yeah, don't make us do all the talking. And work on that Plymouth. I, I want to see that car back on the road because it's uh, it's something that should be done. Yeah, yeah, we need more cars like that out in the road. And, uh, you know, which which leads me to another topic. We were, um, I just talked about this a little earlier with you. During the week, like, like all of us, I watch a lot of different car shows. And I found three glaring faults on major car shows that are on the networks. And I'm right. not going to name which ones they were. But on the first one, the two hosts, they brought in a 70, yeah, 70 Chevelle SS, black, okay. white stripes, and they were, they were telling, telling the people how to decide if this was a real Chevelle, a real super sport. So they look at the VIN. All right, mm-hmm. the VIN's got some of the information. They look at the data plate. Well, that's really a trim tag that tells you how the car was optioned. Right. The guy comes out, he goes, and he shows you in the back, it was a 70. He says, see, it's got the rubber, the rubber bumper, the rubber pieces on the bumper, which was SS only, and it's got the SS badge. I'm thinking, yeah, what if the bumper was changed? You know, <laughs> Get out of my head. And he's like, he's got the SS, you know, emblem in the grill and on the fence. Well, people change those all the time. Yeah. Then he goes inside, they show you the inside of the car, and it's got the, it's got the round pods for the, for the, uh, you know. Yeah, the round attack. gauges as opposed to the rectangular gauges. And he says, this is it. Without this, we, the car cannot be a super sport. And I'm like, no! Are you? <laughs> I'll show you. Mike's got a 71 SS in the shop now that has that rectangular dash because the guy didn't order the interior package right, for the car. Right, because back in the day, if you were a salesman, did not check the right uh, boxes there, you were in trouble. Exactly. And that's why some of these quote-unquote rare cars come up because somebody was just a little uh, inebriated uh, when they checked off the boxes. So that car could have been an SS, but it, it, you know, it didn't happen. Seriously. Let's go to the phones and see if we have an SS aficionado on the phone. Hello, caller. Hey, Ray, it's Tori. How you doing? Hey, Tori. Tori. What's up, man? Hey, Joe. How's, how's right. everything going? Good, 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 good. You haven't lit the place on fire yet, so we're all right. <laughs> uh, hey, I got my extension for my helmet. I'm ready for you guys, so uh, just let me know. I'll, resp- I'll be responding from out east. Don't worry. I'll make it there in no time. Okay. Cool. <laughs> all right. I What's... just heard you guys talking about the uh, Chevelles, how to tell a real SS from a fake one. Right. I know what you're talking about. 
I'm not going to say anything, but the only way to tell a real 70 Chevelle SS, it's not even by the VIN, believe it or not. It's mm-hmm. the option code. Right. No, some, some of them didn't even get stamped with the option code the, on the uh, cow, depending on what plant it was made in. Build sheet. The build sheet, yeah. yeah. If you find a build sheet, mm-hmm. and you're lucky enough to have the original motor in there with the VIN stamped on it, or right. the deck to plate, or mm-hmm. any of that paperwork, right. but without any of that, and not the original drive tray in there, whether it was a real SS when I rolled off the assembly line or not, you have to treat it as a regular Chevelle, because yeah. the, the numbers tell the story. That's exactly. Right. I mean, twelve bolts could be added. Sure, any you know, of that the stuff. The dashes could be swapped out. Mm-hmm. And like, and Tori, not even that. Like I said, the 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 car could have had not not had the trim package installed, so it didn't get the round hole dash. It has a rectangle dash. The seventy one Mike has the shop is a bench seat column shift car. Exactly. It right. was all options back then. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that, people all realize that. But you this know? was on TV, and these guys are now conveying that to to listeners. Of viewers, and I'm like, that is so wrong, boy. You guys are propagating. And in the, and in the next and in the next segment, it's like, and you could buy all this stuff at blah 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 Chevelle Parts at the sponsor, <laughs> right? Duh, and right. make your own. Sure, I mean, you know, cloning is a big thing. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think, for example, I think seventy seventy that 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 body style Chevelle. You did it, it was an I thought it was an option package. There wasn't a VIN. Code well, like, the, like the 67s was, were like 138 cars. Uh, right. Up until 60, well, 64 was a 458 car. Right. And it was actually a 457 it was, if it was a six cylinder. Right. Then 65, it was a 138 car. Right. Or 137 if it was a six cylinder car. Right. 66 was like the first 138 with the big block and where. It was its own separate vehicle. It wasn't a Malibu. It, it was an SS three ninety six. It Chevelle. was its own model line. Yes, right. And one the one three eight ran up until nineteen sixty eight. Okay, In yeah. Sixty nine, they started with the everyone had a one three six VIN number, and the different plants were supposed to stamp the cow tag. Yeah, with like the that always happened. Showing that it was right. mm. a real super sport, mm-hmm. and not everyone did that. So. That's where it gets a little bit tricky with paperwork or original drivetrain with the VIN stamps. That's that's money right there. So from sixty nine up, you need to be careful. Yeah. Oh hell yeah! No, you don't have the uh, the VIN number to fall back on to identify the car correctly. Exactly. There's way too many. Cl- there's way too much cloning going on. They're not just Chevelles. I mean, a lot of different cars. Like I spot Camaros all the time. You know, all the time. You get that you know. Uh, it's like, wait a second, that option code didn't come, because that stuff's just like stuck in my head forever. Well, you know, I got a feeling this car I've been working on isn't a super sport. I, I, it didn't have a data plate, but it did have, I ran the VIN. Right. And it was a six-cylinder, it's a convertible, but it was a six-cylinder car originally. Oops. Now, you could order an SS option on a six-cylinder. You could yeah, have done that. Yeah, in some years they could do that. Yeah, I don't know that year, but... I just have the feeling this car wasn't, but you know, which is okay. I mean, hey, you can right. build it any way you want. Just represent it that way when you sell it. Yeah. On the first-gen Camaros, the uh, the base motor for the Super Sport, believe it or not, was a 350. Correct. Yeah. That's yes. a great motor. I mean, that that's the base motor. That's Sign me no up. slouch. Take, you know? Yeah, you right. got that right. And then you got the 396, which was an option, and mm-hmm. a lot of people, too. Oh, disc brakes, they were standard on the first-gen you know, Camaro Super Sports. Uh, 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 no, no, exactly. No. On the Z28, yes. Yes. SS, no. No. SS was more of a trim package, a trim with, package. with the yeah. more motors available. I mean, basically, exactly. as far as brakes go, they give you the drums and an anchor to throw out the back. <laughs> I mean, right. I've seen L78 cars with drum brakes around. I mean, that's a little yeah. dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know? you got that right. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's cars like that, you know, they're, they're more cool for their rarity. Than their, their their actual driving, like would I want to cruise one around every day? Uh, you know, not that, it, but you know the so some of the cars are not optioned, you know, the way uh, you would you would want to have a car every day. Exactly. As far you know, as I'm the coolest concerned. thing is though, when you're rolling on a cruise night and you got that rumpy rump in the cam and stuff like that, and you just have to stand still to get attention. Yeah. You don't need to go fast or go sideways. You know, doing the burnout, you know, oh, into yeah. or out of the lot. We were just right. talking about that Thursday night. Lou was just talking about that cause that is so cool you don't have to do anything because it represents itself. That's, hey, uh, you know, it's funny. My 68 Camaro, I brought that to a cruise night, and there's a soul timer there with a cane. He goes, what do you got in that thing? I said, ah, it's stock. He's like, you're full of it. I'm going to find out what's in that thing. So that, <laughs> that guy with his cane, he found me about three hours later. Right. He goes, yeah. okay, now you're going to tell me what's in the car. <laughs> I said, well, Jeff Lawrence in West Hampton built the motor. He goes, okay. <laughs> I told him what was in the motor, that it was no longer a 327. It was actually a 383. Oh, yeah, yeah. He goes, wow, you're sneaky. I like that. So yeah. Uh, yeah. 
that's what you want to do. You want to make the call. I mean,